Hi everyone, I am Kayla Record, and I know I'm coming to you a little bit different today. Uh, normally I am on here with my co-host Hector Lopez um, for our Cutthroat College planning. And today I'm actually coming to you solo because it was something that I just, I really wanna share with you guys. I know for our normal listeners, you know that we release our episodes every other week. Um, this is something I'm actually kind of breaking that a little bit as a little bit of a PSA announcement for you guys, um, hopefully to my parents more so than anything else. And this is coming because I have had such a magnitude of students that I'm teaching currently that are high schoolers um, that are in my college prep boot camp program. And I have had the same questions or the same challenges from them. And I really want to educate all of my parents out there, all of my listeners, as much as I can about this issue. Let's pause and hear a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by the One Big Thing Podcast. If you're in the thick of life as a parent or a spouse and just trying to grow as a person, then you won't want to miss this show. Hosted by Steve Campbell, the One Big Thing is an interview-style podcast where he brings you guests from all walks of life. Picture professional athletes, influencers, business owners, and even some rockin' stay-at-home moms. Each episode will bring you as a listener a life hack or a way of looking at life that will help you move from inspiration to transformation. Listen to the One Big Thing podcast and all major podcast platforms today. I'll start off actually by giving you guys a little bit of a story, giving my students' names completely private. Um, I had a student recently that I'm working with, and my student had come to me and said, that they had gone on a college tour. I said, fabulous. What kind of college tour did you go on? And they said, I went to an art school. I said, okay, an art school. That, that sounds great. What did you think of it? And the student tells me that this art school happens to be in New York City while it's about a three and a half hour drive. Um, as I'm going through exploration with the kid and I'm asking a lot of questions as to like, what about this experience was intriguing? Did you find that they had your major? Come to find out, the school does not even offer the major the kid wants to go to. So I'm kind of a little mystified at this point, trying to figure out where the connection was as to why the kid wants to go to a 70 something thousand dollar school when they tell me they want to stay close, local, and it's almost a four hour commute in. Um, so my job when I'm teaching my students and in these situations for parents is. My job is to find out why, what is that value? Where is that connection? Um, and because I'm an outsider and I'm able to get answers from students, a lot of times parents will get one word answers where me being an outside expert in this area and working with them daily, they're more willing to open up and tell me. So after a lot of exploration with the student, a lot of questions, I come to the conclusion that the student not only really loved this school and it made it a great impression, um, it wasn't the school at all that made the impression. The impression the student received from this experience was that they were going to receive cookies at every class when they went to school. And I'm kind of going, what? I've worked at a college and I know that this is not the case. You don't get cookies to go to class. That's really not how it works. Um, there's an exchange in currency and tuition and you go to class or you don't and you have a consequence, but you don't get a cookie every day to go to class. So we're talking about this and I'm kind of laughing and like talking with the student through the process. And I said, where did this exactly come from? Where did the cookies come from first? Like maybe you were at the Culinary Institute. Maybe it was, you know, something part of the program. And the student says, no, it was definitely the Art Institute. And I said, okay, it's not a culinary. Where are the cookies coming from? So I find out there was beautiful tables in front of an admissions office and in front of their financial aid office at the end of the tour, which was very structured. And I asked the student, are there balloons? Perhaps. And the student says, yes, of course there were. There were lots of balloons and there were other students there. And I was like, oh, I see. So it was a very much, this was a, it was a set up tour. The school had set days a year in advance for when they were doing tours. They open up these like dates 
and everybody's prepared. Everything is set up. The grass is pristine. The food is amazing. Like all of these things is very planned. It was a planned tour. So in a planned tour, you are going to see a lot of extra perks or things like kind niceties for students as you go throughout the day, right? It's a long day. It's a long day touring and going through a campus. Um, so in fact, you may actually see cookies. You may be able to take cookies. However, I, I would encourage you leave the cookies on the table. Um, they don't insignify that you get to go to school and you get cookies every single day. As my students heart is now broken and dreams were shattered when I told him the reality. Um, they, he was not going to get like cookies every day to go to class. And so while it is comical and it is a very unique connection that I have never had a student draw before until this, which is why I wanted to share this one. Um, it comes with a very, very important point. And the point to this is while you have students and you have a lot of schools right now and schools that have been over the past few weeks, they schedule tours, high schools, right? They may schedule a group class tour for your kid to attend, to attend a walking guided tour at a campus. Um, parents, this is not enough. Do not let your kid go on that and walk through the door when they come home and say everything was fine and then just keep walking. That's not enough. If your school and the school that they go to on a guided tour is open and close and you can actually go with them at some point, go through the tour with your kid again, even if they've been there once. Ask them the questions because what's going to happen is, and what I have seen time and time again, and this is been the theme of over 40 something students in the last week and a half has been the things they take away from a tour is not as an adult what we think we are getting them to take away from that tour. They may be making the connection of there's amazing cookies and I get to eat cookies while I'm in school. Everything else, that's it. Everything else falls by the wayside, right? Most expensive cookie you will ever pay for in your life. And I hope that they are absolutely fabulous. However, if you do not have a money tree growing in your yard and you do not have cookies that you would like to spend $70,000 on, um, I recommend you ask some extra questions to your kid and find out what it was that they actually really resonated, what did they see, and what did they love about the school and why. And I will tell you that the answers are going to be profound and amazing to you because a lot of the times... Almost every single one of my students has said the exact same thing. And it is never anything out of that tour that I would have wanted them to have taken away before they did a prep class. And so they're drawing conclusions based on, I saw a lot of groups of girls that looked really pretty. Um, I was really close to the beach. I get cookies, right? Those are all things that are connecting in the student's mind and then they're gone. They don't make any more connections. So you have to talk to them. You have to take time to ask them why. You have to find out what it is that they're really, really wanting and why they're investing in this idea of this school. And ask them, does the school offer their major? Um, this is the other theme that I have found with every single one of my students in the past few weeks, especially. Especially my newer students coming into my program. They assume and have drawn the conclusion every school is the same. Yes, your undergrad classes, you have grad, undergrad requirements, your prerequisites, those are, but your schools are not the same. Meaning, you may not have a program offered in that school. So, if you're looking for criminology or a forensic psychology or a data forensic psychologist or something that is different, my students are all assuming that they are all offered at every college, and that is not the case. So you need to ask them and dig into looking into like, what is it that's important? Do they offer that major? And if they don't, what do you do? Maybe we look into some other schools that does, or we do a deep dive into, is that major the right one for them? Um, so parents, I'm hoping that this brief announcement, if anything, comes to you at least enough to wake you up to think, 
that you have follow-up and you have some things that's required of you, regardless if your kid is going on a tour with or without you. Um, you need to really find out why, what it is they want to do and why they want to be in that school. Because the connections that they make may not be the ones you want them to make. And it might be the most expensive cookie you have ever paid for out of your entire life. 